All right, guys, it's Fox with Foxio Plays. But before we get into the episode proper, Return to Lordran, Episode 4, while I was farming for all of the large, I'm sorry, the Titanite Shards, yes, large, large Titanite Shards, I bumped into this summon and I thought, you know what? I don't know how often summons happen anymore on the PC platform, so I decided to go ahead and give it a shot. I would summon him, and if it was successful, I was going to run and tackle Quelag as well, the boss of the area. I tried to summon a second player, but that one expectedly failed. Summons tend to fail in these games quite often. So, uh, as an alternative, I just went ahead and summoned Maneater Milfred, who I did defeat while going through and uh, traveling through the swamp just to get back up and get that repair box and the uh, weapon smith box and all that stuff I told you I would get. And of course, I did end up getting all the upgrade materials I needed as well. Uh, we are a bit later going to switch it up to the Baldur Side Sword, just so you know. I've already done it at the point that I'm actually recording this portion of post-commentary. So this is not live, I'm actually watching it, just like you're watching it, and commenting after the fact. It just sort of happened naturally and organically, and wanted to get it on video and go ahead and tackle Quelag with someone else. Uh, well, I was surprised to find that not only have I been invaded once already, in this now ancient game on the PC platform, never really enjoyed a ton of online popularity except for the like first month or two when it was new. But uh, there have been a couple summon signs out there, so that's a, that's a good sign. You get it? Pun intended. Summon signs are a good sign of some activity, but it's not uncommon, particularly on PC, that older games will get a lot less uh, attention when it comes to either competitive or cooperative online play. For some reason, uh, PC players tend to move on sooner, even, than console players, it would seem. So in this case, we're getting Maneater Mildred. She's a guaranteed summon, as long as you have defeated her and are in human form. And, of course, Quelag. The infamous fight. We're going to skip the cutscene. You guys have all seen it a hundred thousand times, and you know all the comments people make on it. Now, in this fight, I don't believe I get hit more than once when some lava touches, like, my toe or something. The one thing about Quelag I feel is really unfair is that she can actually, when you notice when she spews the lava, it usually goes out the direction that the mouth is facing, but it is actually possible for the spider's mouth to shoot lava sideways. Which I think is just ridiculous because there's, there doesn't appear to be any reasonable means by which that could happen other than just try to trip up the player. And I think it does happen once in this uh, segment while I'm fighting it. So yeah, shooting lava completely sideways is cheap, if nothing else. But other than that, it's a pretty fair fight. She telegraphs her moves quite well for the most part. The only problem you really run into here is if you get hit directly with the lava or if she actually corners you and you let yourself kind of get cornered by the various lava pools and then she does that uh, AOE uh, aura attack. That AOE aura attack is one of the most dangerous. See right there? Can shoot the lava sideways. Uh, yeah, that just seems kind of odd to me. Maybe it's a glitch or a bug, but I don't, I don't think it should be doing that. She can also spray it from side to side like she did right there. Like I said, you got to be careful. It's all about the positioning. As long as you keep yourself a good distance from the lava, then you are good to go. And you'll notice that I only took that one little uh, hit from bumping into the lava there. Other than that, no damage. So, quite like is not a tough fight, particularly if you've upgraded your weapon as much as you can. And my weapon, I believe, was a plus... I think it was a plus nine at that point. Now, I was going to run back to the bonfire and just go ahead and keep... Uh, keep farming everything but then I realized you know what I've already made it this far let's just go ahead and go back there pull the lever <coughs> excuse me get the firekeeper's soul and also use that bonfire over there so that eventually we can warp to it I'm 99% sure you can warp to the bonfire even after you've killed the bonfire keeper as long as you've sat at the bonfire at least once uh, I don't really mind getting rid of the Bonfire Keeper here because I don't need her for anything. We're not going Pyro, and um, I'm certainly not going to join that Covenant. And uh, her Fire Keeper Soul is a much more value to me than her being alive. Take that, upgrade her Estus Flask, and get ourselves some plus three Estus rather fairly early on in the game. 
before even hitting up uh, Sin's Fortress. So that's not bad. Not a bad deal. As to class plus three pre Sin's Fortress. Why don't I just kill this guy? Uh, because all those little worms coming out are actually a bit of a hassle. It can be hard to hit them accurately. So I actually don't kill him. I just skip him. Sit down once to make sure I can uh, get to it in the future as a warp point. Throw some levels in there. Kill the Firekeeper and get the soul. I'm glad I was able to get a little co-op in. It may be the only time I actually co-op a boss in this run. But we'll see. I'll try to get it if I can. Depending on if I'm in human form or not. And if summons are available. It's all about whether those summons are available. Alright guys, let's get into the episode proper. I'll see you in a second. Alright guys, well this is the official start of the fourth episode. I know at the start of the, you saw some post-commentary of me using uh, a summon and tackling Quaylag before I managed to max out my weapon, but now we have a plus 10 longsword. Uh, the Balder set I didn't mess with, the shield I didn't mess with. I also purchased, of course, the uh, weapon smith box, the repair box, and uh, something else. I farmed up all the large titanites that I needed and leveled up as much as I could, so my level my stats are as such. Pushing down on the French press, and my coffee is now ready to pour black hot pouring it into a coffee mug which has an American flag across and says God bless America on it so that's about as American as you can get I mean maybe just holster a weapon on my belt right here have a gun at my side and, and then you know jump on a horse or something and I don't know how else to make that more American oh I know put a bunch of crappy uh, sugar in the coffee how about that here we are in blight town and now we're leaving Blight Town. Everyone say goodbye to Blight Town. But before we really say goodbye, we're gonna tackle some of those toxic blow dart fellows and get the Firekeeper's soul that's up here. A valuable item, particularly valuable if you're newer to the game. I know this outfit looks kind of strange. It's it's like you're wearing a pair of old fashioned underwear this balder set we don't plan on keeping this for too long we'll replace it with something else as soon as something better comes along we're gonna try to ignore all of the nasty little uh, mosquito critters but in the meantime I would like to equip this in case the toxic oh shoot we've only got one I thought I bought some extra hmm Okay, so that's one down. Oh shoot. I can block it a little, but not not enough to where I want to keep blocking. Let's keep on the move here. As long as you keep moving in a different direction, not straight at them or straight away, you will be able to dodge the toxic blow darts. And I really, really need uh, a blooming purple moss clump because I've only got one at the moment and I don't want to waste the one that I have although I will keep it handy okay so I just realized I don't think I have very many good uh, options here but let's see if I can get them with the black fire bomb oh that did get him okay still not a blooming purple moss clump that's a bummer, but that's okay. You know, we'll still survive. Where's the other one shooting from? Oh, down there, that's right. Oh, oh, oh. Nice. Ah, still not a blooming. We got one more to take out, and we'll actually unequip that so we don't accidentally use it. And then we'll have those dogs to take care of. Those are, those are always interesting, those dogs. Oh, well that works. Don't fall, don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. Okay. No blooming, but that's okay. We'll, we'll live. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can get both at once. Yes! Double kill. Alright, so at this point, if we died, it wouldn't be too big a deal, but we don't want to die. Not in the game. Not in real life, at least not right now. Oh, 
Cool. That worked out in my favor. All right. Well, if they didn't notice me, I'm not going to worry about them, and I'm going to keep on moving. Now i got to figure out how to get back. Oh, just climb back out. That's right. So we are going to have to worry about those guys, aren't we? There we go. Fire breathing dogs. The good news is, with this armor, we can withstand a, a little bit of damage. We can take some hits without being staggered. Time for some coffee. Ooh, that's hot. Oh, shoot. Mosquito attack. Dark Souls is the game you can play over and over again. And never stop. It never stops. Dark Souls goes on forever. It's an endless cycle of the fire. That is particularly hot today. I don't know what the deal is. Oh, you know what it was. I poured the hot water in as soon as it started boiling. I'm usually uh, off by like about 30, 45 seconds. So Blight Town performs very, very poorly on the consoles. That's no secret. Everyone knows about that. But as you can see here, it's not bad. Like, I can look all the way down and maintain a 73 frames per second frame rate. Of course, I've got a GTX 1080, 8 gigs of RAM, an Intel Core i7, and, thir oh, shoot. 32 gigs of system RAM, which isn't really, I mean, that's overkill. That's way overkill. Large club in the dung pie. The large club. Well, I meant to actually backstab him, but that didn't work out. Now... These guys can actually knock you around and do some good damage. They can be troublesome. Although, the good news is when they do their little roar, they become easy targets for backstabs, and they're also slow in general, making them easy targets for backstabs. So, you can kind of chain backstabs on these guys, if you know what you're doing. <laughs> Especially when that guy phases through me and puts himself right in the position. Alright. Oh, really now? You're gonna float in the air like that? Hey, look at that. Look at that. It's like my soul right there. Okay. Whatever. It's just a dung pie, I'm sure. Who cares? With this, we are now free. There's a couple areas we can go to, but really, progression in the game dictates that you go to Sin's Fortress. It's the natural thing to do. I gotta keep in mind that we already spliced this episode together with the Quelag fight, so the timer I have running here, uh, I gotta add, you know, the, the time from the Quelag fight to it. Make sure this episode stays 45 and under. Have I ever put anything in my coffee? Not really. Um, I tried one time putting like stevia or something, but I don't like the taste of coffee and sweet. Coffee is not meant to be sweet. I do eat chocolate, but it's uh, pure dark chocolate with nothing in it, no sugar. Nothing, just 100% dark chocolate. If you're not used to it, it, it gets kind of uh, bland. But you can make it work. You put it in stuff, boil it. Not boil it, sorry, double, use a double boiler to melt it. And then add, you know, a little stevia if you really need that sweetness. And want to avoid toxic sugars. Boom, we're safe. Alrighty. Don't have to worry about dying and uh, landing back at, at, at the Blight Town bonfire now. Been bumping up dexterity, put a point into vitality, and I think one into endurance as well. 
Dexterity will be particularly important with the Boulder Side Sword because I do believe that has a little more on the dexterity end than it does on the strength end. I'm 99% I'm sure that's the case. We will need some Titanite shards, the plain shards. So in order to make things easier, I'm going to go buy them now. Because we can get lots of large Titanite from Sense Fortress. So we'll get the regular Titanite to make sure we have nine for the upgrade. So we just need to buy six. And then we'll need nine large Titanite to fully upgrade the Baldur Side Sword to plus ten. The game I'm looking forward to the most as I play this right now. I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce it. It's either Code Vein or Code Vine. It's spelled V-E-I-N. Code Vine, I'm going to call it for now. It is essentially a anime-styled, Souls-like game so far from what we can tell. Um, we've seen footage of it, gameplay footage, quite a bit now. And it does look like um, an anime-styled... Uh, Oh, wow, one shot. But he was in a position where he takes more damage. He was in an instability position or whatever they call those. It's from uh, it's from the same people that made God Eater. So that's not necessarily promising because God Eater is nothing like Dark Souls, really. Other than, you know, different weapons have different movesets. But very, 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 very different game um, in many ways. So... That doesn't necessarily mean that they'll be able to make a good Souls-like. Just because a developer has made a good game, period, in general, of any type, doesn't mean they'll make a good game of another type. So, if you know, if the, a developer usually makes ac action hack-and-slash games... Coffee. Uh, but then, they decide to make a strategy RPG. You might be a little, you know, cautious to make sure that they know what they're doing. It would be easy to mess that up. Fortunately for us, the path to get these uh, Titanite shards is pretty much the same path we need to take to go anyway. We just have to go down one set of stairs. This is where we were heading anyway. So not bad. Alright. Six Titanite shards is what I need from you, my. Oh, I also gave him the uh, upgrade ember, the large ember, or very large ember, something like that. Whoops, <sighs> gotta hit okay. Don't get, Don't get myself killed. I'll try not to. I've never made it a goal to die. I've done suicide runs for items in this game, but never really made it intent to just die in Dark Souls. The gate is now open. You know what? Can you see the uh, the giant? No, you can't, can you? Now that right there is probably a processing issue right there. Now a lot of people wonder why certain things happen in the game. Like people have said, well, I think that the Silver Knights and the Black Knights disappear because they're actually not real, they're illusions, and that, and that may be true, but I think the Black Knights and Silver Knights disappear because of uh, processing power of the consoles, that they just, it wouldn't be a good idea to have those corpses lying around, because it would extract too much processing power for the system. So that's, there may be things that have nothing to do with the story, nothing to do with the lore, that are affecting why certain things happen in games. And it may have everything to do with uh, the processing power of the consoles and whether it can handle a certain, uh, yeah. You notice how tough these guys are, whether it can handle uh, something. Although these characters don't uh, disappear, and you, you know what, let's, let's try that again, because uh, fighting two at once on the bridge is not easy. These guys seem like fairly complex models and very large. Seems like they would want them to disappear if it's a processing power issue, but you never know. All right, let's try this again this time. Hopefully we can kill one at a time. Oh, did it not reset the trap? It didn't, huh? I thought it was supposed to reset the trap. 
I'm gonna very cautiously walk back. Okay, come here, buddy. Oh, yeah. And this is actually where the game strongly encourages you to learn to parry, because although you can backstab them here, these two guys, later on the game will force you onto either a narrow ledge or a narrow hallway and make it very, very difficult to get around to their back. Basically telling you, hey, backstabbing isn't always a solution. Don't know how intentional it was on the part of FromSoft to do that, but it's certainly what they did here. And they also put these two enemies very, very, very close to the bonfire. So you could practice parrying them all day long, and if you die, it's no big deal. You don't go back very far. So it seems like it was very much intentional. If not, if not it was... It was genius by accident. Whereas, one place that was not genius is... I think we can drop this. One thing that was not genius were the Silver Knights. Because the, your first actual up-close encounter with a Silver Knight is on a very narrow ledge. So you haven't had any chance to learn to parry them. Or to even learn if they can be parried at all. You've had zero practice. And then you're put on this tiny, tiny ledge. That's one of the hardest parts of the game. So I think that's an area where they actually failed in the game design. You, you want to give them a chance to meet the enemy first. Get used to them a little bit. And then pit the player <clears throat> against the enemy in a very difficult scenario. So later, we'll encounter a man serpent on a narrow, super narrow bridge. And there, you're just not able to swing around for backstab. You're not able to play games. I mean, they could hit you, and you're not able to just block safely, even with the best of shields, because they could knock you off the ledge. So it forces you to uh, explore your... Oh, shoot. To explore your options a little better. Which I think is a good thing. I haven't, you know, obviously I haven't fought one of these guys in a while, and I never really, yeah, see, I never really learned their uh, hitboxes very well, so I'm not 100% sure how to dodge them. That kick actually goes quite a ways behind him, so the back movement on the kick affects you. Of course, this is your real chance to get in and do some significant damage. Always want to kill this guy because you get that chunk right there. And those chunks will be useful later for most players. Slide, slide. Yes, so I think this area was done quite well in many ways. And uh, the archers... And, Or and Orlando were not done so well, especially considering that one of them can shoot you in the back Depending on the timing and the angle you go up and whatnot So that just seemed unnecessary now here. They got this guy shooting at you as well So it adds even more pressure for you to stay in this narrow space right here. You're safe from uh, the the projectiles But if you try to if you do try to forcibly swing around behind oh whoops you'll probably get hit by the projectiles as well. So they were really, in my opinion, trying to force you to learn to, uh, to parry. Oh, crap. <laughs> I mistimed that run. You notice I started running and went, nope. I'm gonna have to stop there. Speaking of stopping, coffee time. We're gonna get a little refill on that, warm it back up. And then, I just realized again that I don't have a bow and arrow. It's a good idea to have a bow and arrow for here. Not so much here, but the next area. Because it, you're, you're going to want to have some way of taking out an enemy from a distance up, coming up here. Yeah, not much I can do about that right in his face. Oh! I 
can't believe he didn't trigger that. There we go. You can also try to push her, it, into this area and trigger that so it hits her, it, whatever, in the back. And then kills them. That's a good strategy. You can use the traps in this area against the enemies, which is cool. It would have been very easy for them to just make the enemies immune to the traps. This guy right here, of course, is subject to the trap as well. As long as you keep him out there, that rock will keep rolling down and knocking him on his butt. They can drop the Man Serpent Greatsword, which is one of the better strength weapons, I gotta say. Yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead and do this. Okay, I want him to do his forward thrust attack. Not with his head, but with the sword. There, that one. Yep, that one right there. That's the one that triggers the... And if you get right up on him and keep blocking him, uh, eventually he will fall off. There you go. You can also trigger that uh, door right there. Or you can break open that wall right there by changing the direction of the the rolling boulders but it's easier just to have that guy do it like that then you don't have to come back the only reason i came here is for the soul for the souls the only reason i play dark souls for the souls it's not really about the challenge for me it's about the soul perfect timing perfect timing Maybe. We'll find out when I get nailed here in just a second. Woo! It's a good idea to go up and tackle this enemy, just because if you don't, uh, it's easy for this enemy to come back and, and get you. I've said it uh, many, many times, but this ring, <clears throat> the Ring of Steel Protection, is mostly useless in my opinion because it's simply easier to, or, or better actually, it's better to equip Havel's Ring and equip more armor. And the reason I say this is because the armor will give you defense as well as poise, as well as uh, resistances. So it gives you more than just physical defense, whereas that ring is just physical defense. Well, he was blocking for the one shot, so that's not good. Notice again, putting you in narrow spaces to where you can't really, uh, you can't really effectively fight them without the parry or using the traps. <clears throat> I can make a joke about traps in this case, but I don't think Total Biscuit would like that. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Little shot at, uh, you know who there. If you don't know what that's about, someone will mention it in the comment section below. Actually, let's go down here and get the treasure down here that I've been skipping a lot lately. We'll go in here. Be wary of chest. My chest looks fine. We don't need to mess with that. Although, we can. We'll do it. We'll do it the cheap and easy way. Some people still don't know you can do this. There's usually at least one person in the comments section that mentions that they didn't know that was possible. Okay, so you do have to stand near this thing for the the rocks to actually pile up in the hole there. <clears throat> That's what I've noticed, at least. They, they don't seem to pile up unless you're standing nearby and watching, or close to it, relatively close to it. I also picked up a Metroid Samus Returns for the 3DS, so I'm looking forward to playing that. I don't know how much I'll be able to play, but we'll see. I prefer to play that on the go, since it is an on the go thing. And when I'm at home, play games that are uh, not on the go games. Or, you know, if I'm uh, just on the living room couch chilling with the family, I could pull out the DS. 
PS Vita is my favorite. Got a review of the PS Vita on my main channel. You can watch it on VidMe. I'm also on VidMe, guys. If you're not on VidMe, get on VidMe. Make an account. Post some comments. Like my videos. Like your videos. Post your videos. Oh, crap. What was that? Oh. See? See how, see how I'm still a little off here? Alright. Actually, we're just going to send these off into nowhere, so they pose no threat to anybody. Boom, see? Now they are of zero threat to anyone. You can see what this is. Of course, that's the area we came up closer to the beginning. This leads down to that area where we had the man serpent break the wall. <clears throat> and this right here leads down where we ran up. Oh, I always miss this right here. I always run around circles and do that. You can run through that or just trigger it and back up. The pros run through it. Since Fortress is certainly fun and interesting and challenging, but I feel like it's, it's really, uh, I feel like it's unfair having it be this long and no middle bonfire. It really needed a bonfire in the middle. Desperately needed a middle bonfire. Just out of a sense of fairness. Because the difficulty spike here is already pretty massive with these man serpents, the traps, the narrow corridors, the ledges, the instant death falls, and of course other players constantly invading here because they know how difficult it is already. So the last thing you needed, especially if you're a new player, is to have this area have no, uh, Flamberge is okay weapon, is to have this area have no, um, <laughs> bonfires anywhere until you get nearly to the very end. I think I could have used one bonfire in the middle. Like have a bonfire room right next to the, uh, boulder room right there. The boulder switch room, I think would have been a good spot. I knew that was going to happen, but I knew I'd recover. I knew everything. We need only five large Titanite shards, and I believe we can buy some up there too. So we need just five more large Titanite shards to get a weapon from plus five to plus ten. Coffee break. Oh yeah. Run around in circles, standard thing to do when you're waiting for a summon. Alright, right here is where I was talking about the need for... You know, I have a crossbow, but do I have any bolts? Negative, so that is utterly useless, and I have no bow. At this point, you can't really use daggers, because it won't kill it. Although the daggers could cause it to fall. What we'll do is use a black firebomb. Although not straight from the menu like that, that would not be easy. Okay, we'll try it this way. Sometimes those actually hit the wall. There we go, thank goodness. Yeah, sometimes when you try to throw something, it like would hit one of these ledges right here, and then you'd lose it, and that would really suck. Right there is where people often come in and for invasions, so they can drop down on you and do like a plunging attack kill right here as you're trying to get past these. You can run past these in one shot if you want to don't need to, so, eh, I took the easy route. What would really suck right now is to die right here, because you're so close. So my recommendation is to go straight for the bonfire, which I, for some reason, thought was up there, and it wasn't. I took a risk by going to grab that item, but it all paid out in the end. Gonna save my souls for buying large Titanite in case I need them, although I don't know if I will actually. Because I do believe we get. Do we get five more? We may not get five more. We may get three or four more up here. I know there's two at one point, and then there's another pickup and possibly another one, so I think four. But my memory isn't perfect. Come here, buddy. 
Now these guys have a much higher drop rate, no question about it. I can't prove it, I haven't proven it, but I can tell that they have a higher drop rate. Because they drop things far, far, far more often. And see, also seems to include their armor set as well. Oh, and speaking of drop rate, why don't we... Oh, we can't take that ring off, obviously. For obvious reasons. I'm trying to just, uh, fast roll here. It's the best helm. Ooh, still can't. Have to be nearly naked here. Just gauntlets and uh, boots. Gauntlets and the boots. Gauntlets and the boots. There's no secret there. There never was, never will be. Come here, buddy. And the good news is, I think nearly all of these guys up here have the regular side sword. They're not the rapier type. There might be one up here that's a rapier type, one or two, but most of them are uh, side swords. Again, if they have a side sword, that's what they can drop. If they have a rapier, that's what they can drop. Uh, the rapier ones do not drop side swords, obviously. We can farm those two repeatedly. But I think uh, there may be a better farming spot up here. I forget what it's what the best way is to farm them up here. It's been a while. It's also best to farm this area after you've already gotten rid of the golem that throws the fiery boulders. One. He can do two of those in a row, which is the most dangerous thing. Because it's hard to gauge when he's going to do two smackdowns or just one. Ooh, steel armor. We might use that. Although it's quite heavy. Uh, let's see. Don't remember everything over here, but... Uh, oh, Ricardo. Mr. Ricardo. This guy can be a little troublesome, and I really don't need to be up here, but I think there's one large Titanite shard, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, shoot. Please don't kill me. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to lose 10,000 souls. There we go. His rape here does that special move, but uh, it's it's really good if you can if you can get the attack off in PvP if the other player doesn't have a ton of poise. But you do get locked into it. You get locked into the move of like five, six different uh, thrusts. Come on, come on now. There we go. I pretty much never use Divine Blessings. I always save them for a time that never comes. Saved for a rainy day, and it never ends up raining. Ladders are a perfect place to drink coffee. I don't 100% even remember this area, to be honest. Well, you know what I forgot to do? Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. I just went backwards. Is there nothing else in that area? I thought there was a... a way down or something. Oh, shoot! Oh, okay. Did I miss the stairs down or something? I thought there was a place to pick up the key. No, okay. My memory is... Nope, okay. That's elsewhere. That is elsewhere. Those those are just those two items. Not really worth it unless you want Ricard's rape here. Which I don't want. Alright. Although if you want to go full dex, it's not a terrible weapon. Full dex. 
decks that build. Oh shoot. Alright, I'm gonna turn off the frame rate modifier real quick. And make this jump. How'd you like that? How'd you like that? Then I'm gonna turn this frame rate modifier back on. And talk to what's his face here. Let's buy two of those because I'm pretty darn sure we'll get at least the others that we need, if not one extra from this level. Or if we haven't already. We need one more. Is there another one in the level? Uh, I don't know. We still need to farm it. If we don't get it on uh, on this episode, then I will farm it off camera. Um, it's just it's just me going back and forth killing the Baldur's knights until they drop something. So it's not like you're really missing anything. Ooh, major reaction to getting backstabbed. And that is a shortcut that I almost never use. Although, if you don't want to finish and go straight to Inner Londo, it would be a useful shortcut. Although, after Inner Londo, it's, it's virtually useless, thanks to the Lord Vessel. Oh, whatever. Let's just get the last one. Better safe than sorry. I don't want to have to come back here. Okay, so now we're guaranteed to get that Balder Side Sword all the way up. But before that, we're going to go down this way. Let's see. Oh, I meant to jump down there, darn it. To get the crossbow there. It's sniper crossbow. Uh, I already killed these, didn't I? Yes. Alright, well guys, I'm going to go ahead and start the farming process. Like I said, you're really not going to miss anything. Because all it is is farming. Killing Balder Knights over and over again until they drop what I want. The shield and the sword. So, when I get those, we'll be back in episode 5 of Return to Lordran. Until then, I'm Fox with Foxio Plays. If you haven't already, make sure to follow me on social media. Um, most active on Twitter, but also on Gab, Mines, Facebook, my other YouTube channel, uh, Twitch, and all those other good things. Links are in the description. I will see you guys next time.